Hello and welcome to another episode of Network Special. This is episode eight, I think. Is that right? Episode nine? <laughs> I think every single episode I've done with you, you have been completely unsure of the episode yeah. number. So I'm now unsure. It's episode nine. It's, a, it's episode on nine. episode of some sort. Yeah. Episode nine of Network Special, a podcast where we talk about the golden age of appointment television, where you used to, way back in the day, have to watch a show when it aired, at the time it aired, uh, if you wanted to catch something. Um, but these days, with the magic of the internet, we can watch these things again and again and again. My name's Nathan, and my co-host's name is... Colin, with you as always. Yes, with me as always. Not really. With you as of recent, very recently. Uh, wait, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 yes, as of That I was the not last... in the first 60 or so episodes, but yeah. I'm here season now. One. You, weren't in, you weren't in season one, and you won't be in season three, so just get ready for what? that. What? Are you serious? <laughs> I thought we were going to get you out of here. I thought we alternated getting oh. rid of. So by season three, it would be nobody that was around season one. Do you, do you know how much of a relief that would be? <laughs> no, because then I, I don't want to do any of the editing or anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, on this week's, uh, well, first of all, let me just ask, as I do at the beginning of every episode, mm -hmm. how's, how's your, your week been, Colin? Well, I mean, I, I got to watch a phenomenal film that I'm really excited to talk about. I'm trying to be positive, Nathan. I'm trying to be, trying to take on a new, you know, turn a, turn a leaf or turn the page, whatever they say. And, uh, good. It's been good. My, I got some Halloween costumes knocked out. I shouldn't say that, that mm -hmm. because by the time anyone hears this, that will not matter at all. And it's not Halloween; it's Thanksgiving. So I mean, Thanksgiving. So, I mean, I got some Thanksgiving yeah. costumes. I got. I as yeah. you know, I haven't. I don't know if I've shared this, but I always dress up as um, a a can of cranberries. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a tough costume to make, but I'm devoted to it. So. So I'm ready. Uh, so for those of you who know about podcasts, you know, I, I, there might be a couple of like grandmas who like stumbled on the technology <laughs> and found our episode. You know, <laughs> I but love for that. those of you who are just old podcast pros, you know that a, a lot of podcasts will record their episodes, you know, well in advance. And so right now it is to, it is October thirtieth this record mm -hmm. and so we we are talking halloween even though when you hear this it will be like middle of november or something and um I mean, theoretically they could hear it in april of 2025 oh that's true you could hear it whenever you happen isn't to that exciting we're time traveling right now grandma's in the future that's cool could maybe hear this that's cool um but yeah so as you said, every year you dress up as a can of cranberries. <laughs> that's the worst. That's the worst Thanksgiving <laughs> but, thing I could have thought of. Yeah, I know. But I did see. I I did want to. Uh, the reason why I'm even saying this is because I wanted to point out a cool costume I saw today. Yeah, tell. In 2022, uh, someone dressed up as Ace Ventura when he goes to the mental hospital. Oh yeah. The like hair all sticking up. Did he have the tutu on? He had the tutu on. He had the big boots, the, the boots, big combat yeah. boots. Uh, but he had normal hair because he didn't have long Ace Ventura hair. Oh, well, uh, that's all right. We can excuse that, I guess. Yeah, but I was uh, so happy to see it. And um, because it's mostly like, you know, people dressed as like, you know, the modern day horror heroes like. Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michael Myers, yes. Or, you know, or those, Jeffrey Dahmer this year. Yeah. I've heard is a big, apparently a big costume, which is okay. just weird. It's exactly. that's weird. Like I said, all the modern day horror figures, Jeffrey Dahmer, just happened. That just happened. It just happened. Very timely. <laughs> Michael Myers, movie just came out. Jason, that movie just came out. Yeah. Uh, Nosferatu. Same Those thing. You. I have been seeing a lot of old school retro costumes for Stranger Things. So old what TV movies. 
How, you know, what do you mean like, retro? This, the whole like show she, is retro, isn't it? No, I'm saying like. You know, there's the new stuff that just came out, like Michael Myers and Jason, and, and then there's the old stuff, like Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, I see know? what you're saying now. Yeah. We stepped into yeah, a bizarre world. Now you get world. my bit. <laughs> now you get my bit. <laughs> I, I've told, I've said on this podcast before that I did improv, yet you would never know it, apparently, from here. Uh, well, and from, obviously, from listening my... to me, which is just proof that anybody can do improv as long as you have the money to pay for the class. Well, and it's also proof that my setups are perfect. They were and good, not yeah. confusing at all. Not yeah. confusing at all. <laughs> I was like, is there some new, old, <laughs> vintage, new, old, vintage thing with strange thing? I was getting confused. and But that's not your fault. That's That happens to me a lot. Yeah. So. And uh, speaking of confusing, this week's <laughs> show that we watched, um, a sequel. Uh, may, maybe a sequel you've never heard of. This is a sequel to a pretty big like you know classic comedy movie yeah. i would say a great uh, came great out, movie yeah that came out in theaters um and it starred um a massive comedy figure uh steve martin and um this movie is uh, called parenthood yeah <laughs> parenthood <laughs> To even parentier, <laughs> yeah, even parentier. No, the jerk. Of course, I'm talking about the jerk. Yeah, uh, the jerk is one of my favorite. I love the jerk. It's a great, great movie. And this, it's you say this is a sequel, and it is because the name of it is literally <laughs> the jerk two, the Still jerk T-O-O. comma, yeah, the jerk comma T O O. But which, I, by the way, <laughs> is one of I think the first times, one of the first times in history on TV era movies where instead of saying two, the number two, they're making a joke about it by saying T O O. I think this is like, like one of the earliest, like dumb and dumber two did that. Yeah. Or um, like, uh, part do for a hot shots, right? Like playing on the, uh, the two thing. or uh, look who's talking to now. Well, the yeah, second two, no, two that's right. The third I'm with one you now. now. <laughs> uh, or, you know, the naked gun. I, I, the Naked Gun, two and a half, thirty three and a third. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Playing games with those, yeah. but or or I know this is the second time in a couple episodes we've mentioned the uh, the movie Loaded uh, Weapon, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon. We mentioned that on the yeah. on another episode recently, but yeah. that one was called Loaded Weapon Part One. Is actually the technical name of that movie. There you go. Or what about Leonard Part Six? Leonard Part Six, yeah. Starring America's dad. God, yeah. Whatever happened to him? I feel like he's not in stuff as much anymore. He kind of he retired after that movie. Except the clink, <laughs> he's he was in he was in that and still should be. Uh, Boom. Girl with the- uh, so this movie, The Jerk, to what you were saying is th- like this is a sequel in the, in the title only, but this is really like an alternate universe. That's what I was uh, gonna say. Is- yeah, and the reason why is and and I read this though I could not confirm it through anything except this one blog post. And the fact that, yes, of course, that's what this is, is this was meant to be a pilot. A TV. Yeah. That's, I read yeah, that, too. I must pilot. have found the same yeah. obscure blog. Entry. blog. <laughs> but, yeah, this is this is a pilot for a TV version of The Jerk. And so, of course, Steve Martin is not going to be playing in this because at the time, movie stars didn't necessarily cross over to TV. They didn't have prestige TV yet. Right. Exactly. But so. it, it is, um, it does make sense more sense as a, like uh, a pilot or it probably would have been a couple episodes, I'm guessing. Cause it is like t- what, two hours, hour and a half. Um, but it makes more sense as a, as the beginning of a TV show, even though the yeah. idea of having a TV show about the jury, about Naven Johnson is stupid. Is like nonsensical. <laughs> it's like it would run the joke in the the idea of him into the ground so much that it would get tiresome immediately. Much well, like I, this, this movie kind of yeah. does. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's. I mean, you have like, um, you have shows like, say, like Kimmy Schmidt, right, where you have these characters who are completely innocent and buffoons, you know, and I think. I think the characters still have to have some sort of grounding, you know, whereas like speaking of the same 
actri- actor playing in The Office, um, her character is completely oblivious to anything. But if that was the main character of The Office, I don't know if it would be. be like, oh my god! Yeah, it's yeah, funny it's... to have them pop in, but yeah, to be the main like... character. I would argue that those two characters, Kimmy Schmidt and Aaron on The Office, who's, um, I'd I'd argue that those have more depth and more like more interesting point of view and things to say about what's going on around them than this version of Navin Johnson. Um, (laughs) Like Steve Martin's Navin Johnson uh, is an idiot, is is does all kinds of dumb things, has dumb moments, doesn't understand basic things. But he's also got like an edge and like a uh, just like some uh, he, uh, an, I don't I can't even think of a better way to say it than an edge. But he's got like some something to him that makes it like funny and interesting to keep watching him being a buffoon. And no, this and just doesn't have that really because yeah, uh, because it, of a it, lot of things we can talk about. But yeah, and it, it right and it's. I feel bad because, um, so let's just say who the the the, the actor playing David Johnson in this, Mark Blankfield, Blankfield, right? yeah, right? Mark Blankfield. So, um, he was a big, um, he was a in on fr- on Fridays, right? The cast yep. of the show Fridays, which was a Saturday Night Live kind of competitor, but not really because they didn't air at the same time. But it was just the answer to do that one of the things and, it was famous for if you've ever seen uh the movie uh, man on the moon yeah. is andy kaufman being on an episode and he was in a scene that where it was like him and a group of like like a couple couples out to dinner i think if i'm remembering this correctly yeah. and they keep sneaking off to the bathroom and like smoking weed and coming back so they're acting like high once they get when he didn't like to do Drug, drug, humor, drug humor or he said that or something and so he stopped he stopped reading the yeah. cue cards of the scene and i think it wasn't it michael richards that was in that scene with him and got really pissed and walked over and like took the cue cards and like walked back into the scene and like threw them in uh andy kaufman's yeah, lap and, i think and, i'm remembering that correctly so that was like one of the of, big things that got it attention too at the time yeah and th- there's all kinds of you know myth myth mythology around it in in the sense of like was everyone playing a part or were they right. really pissed you know i think people i think potentially people were pissed but they're trying to act like oh they were all in good fun because everyone wants to, no one wants to be seen as the guy who didn't get andy kaufman or something exactly yep um but so he's he was a member on the show and he was kind of seen as like a as like an up and coming like this is this is it like this is he's one of the new comedy figures you're going to start seeing and he gets this and he gets to play steve martin's role which was probably a huge deal Mm -hmm. you're like oh man the jerk's amazing like let's do this and um sadly uh he does not pull it off (laughs) yeah he's a lot more he's fine he plays it a lot more like um like wide-eyed country bumpkinish than um than like steve Balky. martin did yeah <laughs> yeah that's a good way to describe it absolutely he looks like cousin larry he, he does he look like, like he's Balky. from that family in some way <laughs> yeah. but yeah he's uh he's pin- yeah bronson pincho is ish esque um but yeah everything's just kind of like well gosh he has almost like a southernish twang to the way he talks to I don't know if he does the actor or if that's just what he did. But, no, no, no. He, uh, like Steve Martin didn't really have it. Steve Martin didn't really have that. Um, so yeah. I, I'm sure the actor, if you're in that role, I'm, you're probably thinking like, what are little you know things I can do that make this my own? And I I understand that, but it just yeah. played like very like hee haw ish to me. Like, gosh, I didn't know we were gonna do that. Like, <laughs> it's just yeah, it was kind of so. The movie opens, and by the way, let's just say, uh, big fans of Mark, because he goes on. Now he it seems to it seems to have retired since all this, but he does appear in one of my favorite shows that I have talked about plenty on this <laughs> podcast. In fact, our first episode ever involved the cast from this show, 
Um, Say by the Bell. He plays yeah. the like he plays he plays a worker at the Max who is basically a stand-in for the real Max who wasn't on the show anymore. Mm-hmm. But he's not playing Max. He's playing the other character. What was his name? I think his name is there? James. Is it James? I think. It's something like that, but he, but, but, you know, of course the kids and go, I just want to, I just want to butt in real quick before we get any yeah, further. Sure. Nathan and I have had back and forths competitions, jockeying for position to find out who was like the more accomplished saved by the bell fan. So, mm-hmm. um, and I still think I am. So, well, I, I mean, I just, you knew his it, name he didn't, there, yeah, so you I didn't know, you didn't know his name was James, <laughs> even though maybe it wasn't, but, <laughs> but yes, he plays, um, uh, one of the like, kind of like, oh, like, you know, uh, Saber the Ball is not fu- a funny show if you uh, judge it by funny standards, but like, there are I think funny moments, and he's uh, he's good in those moments. I think he's one you could count him as some of the funny moments when he's on the show. Yeah, I, I actually think he is pretty funny in the uh, the time that he's on it. He does a thing where he impersonates Zach's father and goes and has a meeting with mr belding yeah and he like just he's real hammy and like over the top because i think isn't his actor or isn't his character an actor in the show yeah and so he's like when he's playing the role of zach's father and trying to trick the principal he's like very like tom belding like it's not tom belding but whatever um derek morris derek morris Richard Belding. No, I was trying to think of Zach's dad's oh, name. Sorry, it's Derek, it Derek? Morris. That, yeah, Derek Morris. He's like, Derek Morris, nice to meet you. Like, he's like very, he actually is kind of entertaining, but um, he wasn't when he was in The Jerk 2 a number of years before. How's yeah. that? You know, like, let's say he's not, I, I do want to say, though, he's not, um, this isn't funny like Steve Martin is, but I don't hate him. I don't hate him in this. No, I don't know. I, I, I didn't either. I think the character is um, heartfelt and sincere, and you do like him. You don't hate him. It's not like um, – it's not necessarily grading. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, but he – but, you know, I enjoy him doing what he's doing. I just – it's just – it's not necessarily funny. Yeah. It's a, lo- I mean, it's a losing proposition. There was nothing yeah. he was going to do. Let's say the script was great. I still yeah. think everybody w- like he's never going to be okay because he's never going to be Steve Martin in people's minds, you know? So, right. and then the script isn't that great. So that doesn't help either. So, but I agree. I don't, he's like, he's still like, seems like a, an okay, likable yeah, character person and guy. So, um, so let, let's talk about how this opens. This thing opens like one of the things that tips it off for it being like a pilot is it opens with a theme song, like a, mm-hmm. like a, a sitcom opening. And the song is like a real freaking Randy Newman, <laughs> like banger. Like it's not him. It's some other guy um, doing like, someone like, like picture like the guy who sings the Cheers theme song. Singing a Randy Newman song. Making your way in the world. I don't know if I sing that. What could we be in trouble if I sing that? Um, uh, yeah, we would get arrested. Yeah, and so probably don't sing it. <laughs> like, I was probably a few words from the the limit where people would have been barging in my house. But uh, I mean, if if Ron DeSantis gets his way, <laughs> that's a political arrested. commercial. <laughs> yeah. If Ron DeSantis has his way. You won't you even won't be, able be able to sing able to the sing theme to Cheers. <laughs> someone I know. What is the name of that song? Oh, I don't know. Tell them the... the, the okay. Isn't I it just called the, like Norm's theme or no, something? No, <laughs> it's called like uh, Everybody Knows Your Name or something like that. Yeah. I, something. Oh, that's 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 a weird thing to call it. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, so... And it's the song's awesome. Like, can I... Uh, I want to commit to playing this song. So I'm going to play it here. And I will Please. have to now that I've said it, because I know when you give me the notes, you'll say, pop this in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, usually I just say, oh, I'll, I'll play a quote, uh, 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 you know, a clip, and then we move on and it doesn't show up. But I will do it. Um, it's awesome. I loved it. I want that kind of music always going. Like, even when I listen to, like, Randy Newman, like, there's, like, one song on an album that sounds like that. And then the rest are, like, 
you know. And did you mention that the whole time it's playing, <laughs> the whole time it's playing, it's like showing clips from the movie. Yes. Whereas yes. usually with a TV show, it's showing clips from like different episodes. This is like, here's a bunch of clips and you're going to see them again real soon because yeah. they're in this thing you're watching. <laughs> Because I'm sure they didn't have anything else filmed at that point, but um. so that that's a great question. So, like, let's say there's there's a couple of possibilities, right? That this is multiple episodes that would have been cut up into mul- you know, um, or this is a, a Sunday night movie uh, special mm-hmm. for the new show coming out, and so they'll play like an hour long episode you know what how, how long is this thing hour and a half Something so they'll like play that, like yeah. a special hour and a half and then this leads up to the show which whatever happens at the end of this becomes the show or they go listen we've already paid for this yeah we're not going to um, just shelf it let's just record it as a movie instead of a show and so then let's make an hour hour and a half movie and um we'll play it i mean i, I I f- maybe maybe they were like invest like they were just like we they spent like a billion dollars on the script. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the, we have to do something with this thing. <laughs> one of the so Steve Martin is one of the producers of this. Yes, and I but have to believe mean? it was probably like well we're gonna put your name on it, and he's like okay I'm not doing I'm not gonna do any I'm not reading the script I'm not gonna give notes I'm not gonna raise money for this thing like it'd be interesting to see I'm sure he's never commented on this. Um, because why would he? But it would be interesting to hear what his his uh, participation in this was, if anything. I'm guessing nothing. Yeah, I I, I would love to hear too. Um, so I'll uh, get I'll get in touch. Yeah, call. I know you have his number. Like, just reach out. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll reach out. Um, after Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but so in all of this movie, there is one cast member. That is the same cast member from the alternate universe, the first, the jerk. Yes, there is. And it's the mom. Yep. Yes, it is. And she's... So, congratulations to her yeah. for being the only one who got picked up. <laughs> yeah, I was... Um, when I was watching it, I'm like, is like is the da- the dad's not the same? Like, are any of these siblings the same or anything? And it's just... No. It's just her. So, I don't know if, like, they thought she would just be recognizable i don't i don't think she was like a notable actress of any kind when she was in the jerk but maybe they just um uh, reached out to anyone that might want to be in it i, I don't know I mean, <laughs> and she's the only one that said yes she was like they're like oh know. hell no that sounds stupid as hell i'm not gonna be in that um yeah so i mean wh- what's the story like he he has this pen pal Who's getting married and she invites him to her wedding and it's all the way in L.A. and they live in some city wherever they live. Oh, 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 by the way, that is also the other character that is from this movie, which was the original house, I think, is also in this. Right. Yeah. Do you, like, I don't know if that's <laughs> an actual house or if that was I'm guessing that's just like a, you know, a prop thing that was put up like a, a front that was put up but to look like a building, this, but it does look but very the, similar. Yeah. It's the same one. I think I read that. You see a little bit more of like his life on this like land or farm or whatever that they live on. It starts out with people like almost like pranking him just to see yeah. if they can like trick him. And they trick him into thinking that one of the uh, hens, the hens are laying eggs and the egg falls into this like little slide thing and slides down. And she, he's catching them in a baseball glove because mm-hmm. I guess. And, uh, and then they, these kids wait, Nathan, <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> this is classic. Like everybody that's listening to this is going to run out and do this tomorrow to someone. They put <laughs> a softball in the little slide thing and, and it rolls down and he catches it in the mitt. I want to say <laughs> that that's it. And, so and that was the I, whole thing. And and can I say um, uh, one of the um, the bullies? You know these these people who are pranking him. Sure. From the farm, um, a guy named one of the the actor uh, who's playing one of them. His name is Gary Riley, uh, 
and he is famous for being in the movie Summer School. Never seen it. Uh, with Mark Harmon, right? Mark mm-hmm. Harmon. Um, he plays. Uh, he was also in. He played Charlie Hogan in Stand by Me. Wait, what's his name? Gary Riley. Gary Riley. When you see him, I said that like I'm gonna know him, but Gary. When Ryan. you s- when you see him, you'll absolutely know who he is. Um, he was he was always in like he was in a lot of eighty movies as, or he was also like in an, some episodes of like um, Amazing Stories and just different little things. Oh God, I love um, that show. But he um, he it looks like he also auditioned for one of the for. Uh, one of the roles for Bill and Ted's as well, but he did. I feel like you're slipping back into the reading Wikipedia to us. I am. I absolutely am. Um, but he was in, he was in summer school with Dean Cameron. He plays uh, someone named. Did you say Dean Cameron? Dean Cameron. Yes. Do you mean Dean Kane? Dean. That's Cameron. embarrassing. No, Dean Cameron, oh. uh, another eighties. Like he was in ski school, I think. <laughs> Any school thing. These he's, movies he's are like great. Top billing. Top Where can we have a school? Uh, uh, yeah. We could have one in the summer sometime. Yeah. Make, write Love it up. It. Do it. What about if it was like a ski mountain? Yes. Yep. Yes. What if there's an old school. man and he was at school at some point and now he's going to go back to school? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's school. perfect. I love that. Put it in the title. Yeah, it's a good title. So he, anyways, he gets a pen pal. He uh, or he has a pen pal. He's, so he decides to leave the little city and go a little town and go to the big city. He has to travel across the country to meet his pen pal to, for her wedding. Mm-hmm. And um, along the way, he gets caught up with these hobos. One of them is um, the famous uh, actor Ray Walston. Ray Walston, Mister Hand from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Mr. Hand from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. What else? Give me something else. The only other thing I can tell he was in a hell of a lot of stuff. The only thing, other thing I can probably tell you is I remember him as a judge on Picket Fences, <laughs> which I didn't, which I didn't okay. watch, but I just remember okay. that for some reason. He um, was in uh, My Favorite Martian. Was the first oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And um, he was Poop Deck Pappy in Popeye. <laughs> the Robin Poop Williams Pappy. movie. Uh, yeah. Is there um. another one? No, well, I don't is know. There a, is there a Popeye too? Yes, wasn't there a new Popeye, Popeye movie made well. recently? <laughs> yeah, Popeye as well. <laughs> Popeye. <laughs> um, here's what I'll say. I really like uh, road movies. I don't oh, know I why. Do I really like where it's like, hey, we got to get across the country for the. You know, there's a so many like there's so many good ones. Um, and like Pee Wee's Big Adventure, great road movie. Yeah. Um, what else? Give actually, Pee Wee Pee Wee Herman's new movie that came out a handful of years ago on Netflix is a road uh, movie too. But um, yeah. What else? What else? Um, <laughs> Isn't there a Tom Green one or something? <laughs> <laughs> road trip. Road trip oh, is a road, road trip. That's not. But Tom I just Green, love. I just, uh, Yeah, he's in that. <laughs> he's in that. Okay. He's the only one of the main characters that doesn't that, actually go on the road trip. He stays like, at the uh, college. Is that DJ Qualls? It is. It was yeah, DJ Qualls coming out party, I believe. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I mean that in the the way that they say that about like a teenager having like a. I'm not saying he's he came out of the closet. That's not what I'm saying there. Okay, I want to make Mr. that Qualls. clear. Yeah, Mr. Qualls, if you'd like to comment, it's like you yeah, call in, we will. Let I just want to make the sure. Yeah, I don't want to whether uh, or not say you've that. come out. Um, <laughs> and actually, I he is DJ Qualls. I believe is gay. He came oh. out like a year or two ago, but okay. that's why I was like, is that confusing? Okay. We've got, we, go. we don't need to travel down that road anymore. But, um, anyway, on that road, what trip? other, but like what other road trip movie, like, um, planes, trains, and automobiles, planes, trains, and automobiles. Kingpin is kind of a, a road uh, movie. Okay. Uh, but I just love it. that. You've never seen that. Um, I know. I mean, there's, there's tons of them and I'm not remembering enough of them right now, but I just love that. Oops, uh, oh, I know. Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, sure. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah, isn't that one? 
Yes. What about Dogma? It, yes, it is. Dogma Road Jane Silent Bob Strike Back is because they're on their way from wherever they live in New Jersey to Hollywood to try to stop the making yeah. of the movie that they yeah. like Dumb and Dumber is a road movie. Yep. You know, and Jane Silent Bob Borat. Reboot, re- reboot as well. Oh, yeah, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> uh, Tommy, Tommy Boy is kind of a road movie. Yeah, how many more do you think we could name? I'm just gonna keep, an hour like, goes by. I think we should just keep doing it. And they're like, yeah. people play this episode. and They're like, this episode can't. That can't be right. This episode's six and a half hours long, and it's just us. <laughs> and we're saying just, road we're just reading the, the Wikipedia time. entry for road trip movies. And, and I've told, uh, I've said this many times, and I'll say it many more times. The original Vacation, one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Mm. Uh, that is, but but I just love this idea yes. that like, you know. You, you constant. It must be fun to write those because you can constantly come up with like. I mean, they can end up anywhere. It's it's usually like almost feels like a bunch of like little sketch vignette things like stitched together. Um, and it must be fun to write that because it's like, hey, look at a map. They're gonna go from here to here. They can hit this. They can hit this. They can hear. You know. Yeah. Um. Anyway, but that's what this is. Is anything. he's trying to get from wherever he? I don't think they ever say what like the state he's in. But, I can't remember. Yeah, uh, he's trying to get out to California. So he goes to the train station. He's gonna um his is it his dad or his mom or somebody tells him go to the train station and you have to talk to this specific no, it's person. The, post, the postman. Oh the po okay, yes, you're right. You're right. The postman gives him a ride to the train station and then uh tells him like you gotta go ask for this person and, and ask them to point you to the track that uh goes out to LA. So he does that, he finds the guy. And Naven's not super bright. We've already mentioned that. So the guy's like, that track right there heads that way. And he goes, okay. And he, then he goes and gets on the track and starts walking it. Yeah. So, and then, and so, so let, let's, yeah. And, and let's, we don't know if we have to hit every beat. Oh God, but, please. Let's not. I don't want to. <laughs> but if I gave he, any impression that I'd like to do that, I was, I'm very sorry. So one of the things that we forgot to mention is that apparently like he's a really good the thing about this oh, character is that yes. he never loses like he he's always wins like and these guys they try to prank him like they say like oh go uh take this red handkerchief and blow the nose on this this bull and he, and they think they're the bull's going to be enraged instead the bull does have a stuffy nose and like he <laughs> can play cards and he wins no matter what like even when they're playing a game where he has to lose he still wins somehow so it, he runs into these hobos they are like they figure out about his card skills and they're going to they're saying, hey, we're going to take you to Los Angeles. But really, they're taking him to Las Vegas to play cards so they can get rich. And um, hobos and that's do. The that's what of, that's the exact kind of thing hobos do. Like, think about all the hobos, you know, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. That's who they are. Yeah. That's why we love them. Yeah. And so they. um so yeah, and so that's kind that that's where it all goes from there. So, and along the way, tons of hijinks. Um, well, any parts that you enjoyed, like genuinely enjoyed during this trip? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, right? I'm, I I'm I want to give a considerate answer to this. Um, I don't well. I want to comment on something you said, and that'll give me a minute to, f- to filibuster and think of something I liked. But the thing with his, him being like this, he's like this amazing, like, card manipulator, like playing cards. Mm-hmm. He can, like, do all this stuff. Like, there's an early shot where he and his dad are doing something, and he's like, he can, like, do all this crazy, like, shuffling and manipulating the cards and stuff with his hand. Um, and that, that comes up a number of times. Like he has to do certain things over, you know, different times that that helps him with. Um, I, I, I always mean, do like a uh, card. I mean, I like, I like, uh, you know, the worst kind of bro stuff, but I love it. Like poker, uh, winners, like people who like are amazing at like, uh, what's the freaking rounders, you know? Yeah. And like all of those kinds of, uh, things are always fun to watch. Someone who's like really good at this thing that seems like it should just be luck based. Yes, absolutely. Um, but he, it's not just that because later on we see that he like knows how to do magic as well. 
Oh, what is the magic? He- oh, right. What is it? He does-, he does like a card trick trying to impress when he ultimately gets to Los Angeles and he meets up with his pen pal Marie and meets, you know, her family and this guy she's going to be marrying who's like got some Eastern accent or uh, not Eastern European, like some European accent from a yeah. place. I don't think they really say where he's from if I don't if I'm not uh, mistaken. I don't think they do. It's probably in his name. But he's like some count or so. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But um, he does like this card, uh, this magic trick. My favorite thing about it, and I've never seen this before, is uh, he's doing a magic trick. And you find that out because they cut to the scene where he's doing it. And he's like 75% of the way done with the trick, it seems. So you don't even <laughs> understand what he's doing. Yeah. And then he just goes like, this is your car. Or he, he says like, this is your, it's like. I don't know, like, hey, th- this is the card you picked, and look in your pocket, it's in there, or something yeah, like that. Right. And then he does another trick a second later where he's like, I I know another one, and it involves an egg, and somebody has to get me an egg, and then they get him an egg, and he, he like, m- disappears the egg, and then... He tells Marie's uh, fiance, like, oh, don't, don't hit your pot, your shirt pocket too hard. I'm yeah. supposed to tell you not to do that. And the guy like smash, the, the guy doesn't like Naven. So he like slaps the shirt pocket and like egg flies out of his pocket. So it's like, now we're supposed to believe that Naven is like legitimately like uh, in a world-class illusionist based on what he's just done. It's just so random. Um, it makes no sense. Whereas like, I don't think the stuff that happened in the original jerk was not like fantastical. Really. It was just like him acting like an idiot, him meeting different people, going different places and then kind of stumbling, you know, bass backwards into like good fortune. Yeah. It's like he makes mistakes and those things just happen to be good things. Whereas in this, it's like, no, he can like feed deer and stuff. Yeah, and they like, don't run from, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, he's just like the, like he's like Ferris Bueller, um, but like ju- he like like never gets in trouble, figures out everything, um, but not like I feel like that's the thing they missed out on. Like they didn't make it like the way the the Steve Martin one works is he's just he just accidentally does all the stuff. Whereas in this, I feel like it's not as uh, I feel like there's a bit an element of magic to it like you said yeah it's it's like it's a scary kind of, Poppins kind of it's weird one of the other things um, that stands out that you asked me things I liked um, did you like when he plays poker with JJ Walker and it's <laughs> it seems like he's playing himself yes. Yes, I did. But he doesn't. They don't. They kind of like you're allude like, to it. We're gonna say what's going on. Here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just. Uh, it's me. It's much easier. If your question was, what are some things that stand out in your mind that were weird? I could probably have answered that more quickly. There was nothing that I was like, oh, I love this part. Like, did you have things like that? No, no. There's nothing. No, this is not <laughs> a movie like where like there, there, nothing in it is. Um, like, oh, well, at least it has this scene. Like if I had to pick something, I would, I would say like, I, I, one of the things I like in, um, the original, the jerk is like, I just like his relationship with his family, how they just Mm -hmm. like all like really, he loves all of his family so much and they all just love him and they're, uh, just like all so super kind to each other. And so even though he's, he's a weirdo and they do that in this one too. So when the times at the very beginning where you see him with his family, it's kind of, uh, kind of interesting or kind of cool to watch. Um, one thing that does stand out in my mind, there's a moment in like, I, it feels like it was like an hour or more into this where there's like, and it turns into a musical. This is so for like, a f- min- couple minutes like like and not just like some there's a musical scene in the original jerk remember when he and um bernadette peters whose name i, I think her name is marie too if i remember correctly okay. in the movie different marie but um they're walking on the beach and uh, steve martin is playing the ukulele and he's singing that song i know i know that it's you i don't know if you okay. remember that part but it's just kind of yeah. like to show that they're like falling in love with each other and it's yeah. just really brief this thing is like in this movie the the musical scene comes the f- freaking out of nowhere. I mean out of nowhere. And it is like 
all these people like running around dancing and like doing da- like, it's crazy. I was like, what is that? I was like, what am I watching? Did I miss something? Anytime a movie has a musical scene, like I get just angry and I hate like if it's, if it's only like one thing that's musical like that, is that what you mean? I hate it. Especially, especially. Okay. If there's something like just insane about it, something like insanely funny, like, um, you know, like sometimes in a movie of like a, like a Will Ferrell style movie, sometimes there's like little things that happen that are kind of funny if there's a musical thing happening. But the ones like this that are like uh, sincere, supposed to be like sincere kind of, uh, and it's just musical. It, it just, it, oh gosh. Our next episode is about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and I'm going to be so angry during that one because there's so much musical stuff. Oh, my God. But I hate musicals so much, and I, it's so rare. You do? I'm really? Interested. I didn't know that about you. It's so rare when I am interested in, in in just a tiny bit of one because of the music. Name but, name a musical that you actually like. Can you do that? Um, I have not seen uh, the Broadway version of Lion King, um, but I don't mind the music in the Lion King. So, like, I I know that those songs are in there, and I've seen like uh, the short versions of it on at at like Animal Kingdom. You know, well, I'd consider so I the Disney kind of animated music. version of that's a musical, isn't it? I, I yeah, mean, most I, a lot of Disney movies uh, are musicals, right. I, and I often times check out during those songs. Really, scenes. but if the music is you know, like, you know, there's, there's, okay. When I say a musical, I mean where it is prime, where the dialogue is sung. Like, yeah, like I saw, I'm not trying to be all braggy, but I saw Hamilton last week. Um, yes. And that would be cool if it was 2014. But um, <laughs> I've been waiting that long to see it. And um, that's pretty much all like, there's a few lines that are spoken, but they're, it's pretty much all song. Like you would hate that. I have not seen or heard much of Hamilton. I've resisted it because I am a hip hop fan and I just don't like the idea of, oh God. uh, rap the musical <laughs> like from like Mr. Show. <laughs> it's not, this, it's not, I know rap. It's, it's not I know rap. It's, 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 uh, it's I just, hip, I just, hip hop I and a lot of things I, blended together, but w- w- let's save my musical no uh, di- um, musical for the next episode because I have lots of thoughts about it and we'll talk about it. Okay, next episode. all right, that's fair. But I, I, I so just tune I just in for that one, everyone. Yeah, I just tune out. If the songs aren't good, I tune out. And this song's not good. Like if the, okay, if they did a musical and it was the theme that we heard in the beginning. I would watch this scene over and over again. It would be my favorite. That is the one thing that I love about this movie. The only thing I love about this movie is that theme song. That's it. Really? Hmm. And, okay. So, there is a scene in this movie that is ridiculous. And it is when he first, he finally gets to the mansion in L.A. where the wedding is happening. Uh, the waiter thing. And he shows up. Yeah, he shows up in. He's he gets mistaken for being a waiter, and so but he's there for the wedding. He walks in, and they're giving a toast at this big long table full of tons of food, filled with tons of full of food, and he's trying to get her attention. He's yelling out Marie, and he just walks forward, <laughs> but he trips as if he was being launched. Out of the <laughs> oh yeah you must have missed that he trips onto a uh catapult yeah, and it just trips fires into him a, into the air into a cannon he gets shot out over to this table where there's pudding on it like green like nickelodeon slime pudding as you do I mean, at i guess a very pistachio. fancy expensive wedding pre-wedding uh, event uh, yeah and he he falls and then instead of like you know getting off the table and then walking over he decides to walk across the table and then slips on like i don't know all the bananas in the world <laughs> like <laughs> every and, every one of and them then, 
falls into a punch bowl. Um, ass ass down into the punch bowl, and it's the cover of it is the, the cover the the movie poster. And one of the reviews I read was like they must have thought that this was the funniest scene in the movie because it's because it's on the cover. And it is just so absolutely insane. And you compare that to the the image from and I know I keep going back to the original. I told you I like the the jerk. But the the image on that cover is uh the image of Steve Martin his pants are like around his ankles so he's like in boxers and he's holding a chair and holding him and that is from a scene that is hysterical like really really yeah. funny hey, and the jerk where sure. he keeps saying like i'm out of here i'm not gonna you know i'm not staying here i don't need any of this and he keeps like picking up new things and he says i just need this and then in this and then yeah, like hey. and i remember the first time i watched that that scene i was like crying laughing at um i didn't I'll, have I'll that s- reaction to the his this Naven falling ass for it first into the no. punch bowl. Um, <laughs> let but me say there's, this, let me say this. Uh, let me say this real quick. I want to say, I just thought of something I do like. Oh, and it wow. Is kind do tell. Of, and it is a trope in eighties movies. Um, where basically like the main character is, uh, a, a poor schlubby person. Yeah. Who is, who is in the environment of rich snobby people Mm -hmm. like um, trading places kind of thing. Right. And the only people like everyone's offended by him except for the Butler The help. Yeah. The Butler loves him. Right. And that is a, I feel like that's a trope in all of these movies where someone poor mixes with rich people is that the Butler who would, you would assume is supposed to be like the stuffiest kind of person because they're like this br- proper British person, but they're the ones who always like h- him. And uh, th- th- this is no different in this movie. This he- he's basically the the main reason why he's able to do a lot of stuff he does is because of this butler helps him out. Yeah, it's, it's... And I enjoy that environment. I enjoy the working class uh, relationship. There I you always go. Love that. I mean, you'd have to think if you were a butler for really obnoxious uh, highfalutin people you'd probably be rooting for anyone to take them down a peg and that's kind of <laughs> where it's coming from there but um right it's like jeffrey you know jeffrey from uh fresh prince fresh prince yeah you know he's, yeah. he's the one who understands will the most yeah absolutely i love it absolutely love it. or the the butler in uh or the uh what was the fran drescher the nanny the they had a really like um sarcastic like uh, same same kind of thing like sarcastic he would like try to like make fun of the the rich you know snobby people that he worked for um i didn't really like that show but anyway um <laughs> you what, weren't a but big I, nan head I, I, I was not i was not a nanophile um <laughs> the uh a nan the, fan. you mentioned that scene and that scene is really ridiculous it's but there's a couple times where there's Phys- something that's a physical comedy ish and it's just played so vaudevillian and like way over the top that it's just absurd. Like th- there's a scene at the end where uh, Marie's fiance, who is a bad guy, uh, alert the press. It's, it, you know, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. um, he's the bad guy and he gets his comeuppance at the end because the, the butler you were just mentioning um, as this, this bad guy, is is running and trying to like stop Naven from like spoiling his wedding or what it doesn't matter. It's running after Naven and there's a big uh giant cake on this singular like circular table just kind of sitting in the middle of nowhere. Sure. And he's running and the the uh the butler like kind of sees him coming and just sort of like sticks his foot out ever so slightly. And this guy, same kind of thing. He like hits this guy's uh, foot and just launches forward. Whereas like if that happened to you (laughs) or me, we would just like eat shit into the ground. Like just boom, we'd hit the ground. And this guy goes way, way over the top with the, the way he trips and just like flies forward and just very clearly intentionally jumps onto this cake. It's like really poorly done. I want to believe that they were, they uh, filmed it and they were like, 
well, we only have one of those cakes. We can't do it again. Yes, we all agree that was bad. We're not going to tell him because we can't do it again. So we're just going to tell him it was good. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. It's it, 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 it may, it's just like the uh, the cake. The guy who jumps into the cake in the November, November rain video. <laughs> <Guns and roses. laughs> right. We were all thinking that just now. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think I've talked about that on this exactly. show before. <laughs> the, the read my guy. mind. Only because I I read a, a, a Vice article about that that specific scene. <laughs> You're kidding me. I need so, to go find like, that. I don't want to rehash it on the show, but yeah. So I will never forget that, and we'll and I'll bring it up again. Anytime someone busts into a cake, oh, I'm going to bring up the Vice article I read about the cake guy in the November rain video. <laughs> <laughs> just because he really just goes for it. Because no, just because the person who wrote the article really goes for it. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, I mean, look. Spoiler alert: He ends up with the girl at the end. You know, it's found out that the guy's a creep. They don't get married, right? I mean, hey. they're just a bunch of goons try to get him, and we didn't mention the fact that Marie's mother is like. Um, a racist who she Naven's like talking proudly about his family and he passes a picture around oh, yeah. and he's the only <laughs> white person in the picture and she, and she gets faints. it and she's like <laughs> and like falls over like face her into head like falls. her soup or something <laughs> yeah. a pie or something like yeah. really it was kind of the, the funny idea just because of how st- I'm like this yeah. that's so so damn dumb the that idea it was like amusing for the wrong reason the I think. idea that she is so the fact that his parents could be black just to the core frightens like her. It just chills her soul to the point where <laughs> yeah. she loses consci- consciousness. And not even like she, it doesn't, she faints and like they try to get her out of the soup. I mean, like she essentially drowns in the soup. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been entertaining if we found out later that she's dead. Like somebody makes a <laughs> reference to her even killing her inadvertently. Uh, yeah, so I, I wanted to make sure I, I called out that. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you did. They got their, uh, they got the, what was coming to them at the end because uh, Naven sweeps in, steals Marie away, ruins the movie. That's another trope that is like really, really overdone is just the uh, breaking in, you know, at the last minute in a wedding and, and saving the day. And sometimes it's done well. Like in Spaceballs, that's great, but a lot of times it just kind of feels sort of tired. I, I want to talk, I, I want to ignore everything you just said. Okay, please do. And and talk again about this theme song, okay? I'm going <laughs> to... Okay. Okay. And, and maybe this is where I'll drop it in so we can talk about it. But And then I, I feel like we should wrap it up because this, yeah. this is what it is. But I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to let everyone know what's going on here. We're using Google Meet. Um, we should say that they're our first sponsor. Um, have you ever been in a meeting and you were using Zoom and <laughs> Zoom just didn't work really well because it got all blurry or maybe it shut you out because you didn't have Zoom Pro? Oh, well, man, I what? hate that, Nathan. Yeah, right. Well, guess what? There's a new guy in town, a new player in town, a new gal in town uh, called Google Meet. Um, and I'm pretty sure that oh. existed before Zoom. Well, uh, don't give up the goose here. Um, we, we've we been using it now here for the last few weeks, ever since we got the sponsor. We got like a free trial that they sent us, you know, in the mail, along with a little goodie basket. They sent us a and, free uh, trial in the mail? Yeah, free trial. Okay. Um, a little card that had like a Google Meet address on it. They're like, we've heard great things about your podcast. Here's a yeah, free and they trial. Sent us that. And they sent us a little like... Um, cake in the shape of the google logo Mm -hmm. that was nice and um and yeah so uh, for all your podcasting recording needs or just if you want to say hello to an old friend uh sign into google meet all right um i'm gonna share this tab (laughs) with you so that you can hear i'm gonna be pissed uh, if i find out there's any google money flowing in that you're not telling me about (laughs) (laughs) that is not happening tell me if you can hear this now oh yeah So let's see. Let's listen to the lyrics. Naven. Naven. 
You're, you're a soft, soft-hearted guy. Soft-hearted guy. The world can be this is, yeah. But no matter what anyone says, you're nobody's fool. But he, so is, no- he is, though. <laughs> he's everybody's <laughs> fool. That's. <laughs> I don't think this guy watched the show. If you're good in your heart, Maven. and you're true to your friends, then no matter what may go wrong, it's a, it's a it lot of context. Yeah, it does. <laughs> maybe you make it's great. A Listen to this awesome. This song's awesome. And maybe you find Slash. I love this. Whatever you do, I'm I mean, th- for you. just this little, like, uh, you know, piano rhythmic piano. And we're seeing all the great clips from throughout of Balky. Yeah. Uh, oh, there he is on a horse. There he is falling off a bridge, and he's the yelling and making a face, and then he's looking dumb, and then this clip he's looking dumb and running. Yeah, this is great. It's half the movie. It's him looking dumb and running. I wonder if when this came out, the people at uh, wasn't he? I think he was like a was he a Second City person or something? I can't remember now. Yeah. He had to have been some, you know, from some place like that to be on uh, Friday's sketch show, probably. But groundlings. I wonder if they were like, "Oh God, do we have to claim him?" He just <laughs> soiled one of the great comedy films of all time. <laughs> now that okay, so let's. But let, it's let's more than I've that. done, and I w- we didn't say this earlier. He is in a Mel Brooks movie, so he, you know, he's had a better career than I have. How's that? Yeah. Um, that was never and, in doubt. You know, I that song. I'll listen. I'll listen. I'll, I'm gonna try and get that into my iTunes. So I can let's do it over and over again. I love that song. What is I it about it. it that you like so much? There's there there is a genre of music, and maybe it's not. Maybe it's just Randy Newman songs and people who are trying to do Randy Newman songs. Maybe that's the genre. You think that sounds very Randy Newman ish? So it's it sounds like you know like, uh. Show people, show people it got does not. nobody. Okay, listen to that freaking song again. You're gonna, are you going to make okay, me play, listen to that second. whole thing again? Yeah, we'll I, go through that you're one. talking to any, a big, song, a big Randy Newman fan. Okay, hold on. Any song, anytime someone goes, any so, anytime someone sits down, maybe I love to goes, see you smile. Listen, okay, that right there, that he do, had, do, 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 he had a tiny inflection there. Baby, I love to see you smile. And listen, listen. Anytime someone sits down at a piano and starts going, do, 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 <laughs> they're doing Randy Newman. Who else but it's does the that? it's the piano doing it. No, it is the piano. Play it again. Show. What? <laughs> no, D- don't don't. If you're such a Randy Newman fan, which I'm totally questioning, a Rand fan. No, yeah. Then you'll well that's that no that's what they call Ayn Rand. <laughs> <laughs> there's some it's the it's there's like a Venn diagram of like <laughs> Ayn Rand fans and Randy Newman fans and there's a little oh, bit of crossover if, and I'm there well, oh, okay, I'm in hold that. On a second. If there is a Venn diagram, then I am out with Randy and then I am not in Randy Newman camp at all. Why is that? I, I do not want to be anywhere near the Ayn Rand diagram. It's because so, you just don't get it. <laughs> You don't true. get it. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't expect somebody like you to understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, well, how many um, uh, jerks out of ten <laughs> jerks do you give this? I give it a couple. Just a couple good, clean jerks. But um, <laughs> how many jerks out of ten? Um <laughs> I don't know, because what, what I was thinking what I was thinking the whole time I was watching this is like, would this be funny if Steve Martin was in it instead? And it was the same script. And I don't think it would have been. No. no. So it's it's not on him. Uh, so I don't want to punish him and his, you know, he's a Saved by the Bell. It's part of our Saved by the Bell family. Three's probably about right. I'd give it three, two, two and a half, three, something like that. I mean, maybe it's, maybe I should, but I don't blame him. No, I blame the script and the idea. I blame God for this. <laughs> he, I, didn't I see disavow him God for this existing. I, I didn't see him listed in the credits. No, he's not. Credits. But 
yeah, uh, you know what? Don't. There's no reason to watch this movie. There's absolutely no reason except to hear the theme song and then turn it off. Can I wrap up with a, a, a joke that I wrote down that I thought was so stupid and nonsensical that I thought it mentioned, uh, bear, you know, it bears mentioning. Too bad. No, that's okay. Too, all, right, all right. Take thanks, care, thanks, everyone. everyone. Have a- <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Now I don't want to say it. I wish you would have just like gone on. We would have just I ended know. there. I know. I'm like, damn, damn. man. Well, that would have been great. That would have been a great end. <laughs> okay. Bye. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hear it? It's not going to be, this is going to be a letdown at this point. No, no, I, well, I, I mean, let's be honest. It was going to be a letdown. No matter what. I know. As soon as I started saying it, I'm like, why am I bringing this up now? I have to cross off all the notes that I have. And it's the one I haven't mentioned. Okay. I just, you tell me if this is funny. Oh, before, before we say it, remember Colin is, and was at one time a professional improver. Uh, a person mm. who did comedy for I wasn't a... paid to be an improviser. <laughs> no, no, you were you were professional. <laughs> um, and so uh, just keep that in mind when you hear this, that if it's not funny, it's you. Not him. I, when I get done with the joke, I want the episode to just end. <laughs> so you want us to say bye now? <laughs> yes, because, you know, what we say at the end of every episode, we always say a little prayer. <laughs> And we end the show. And I, I hate did you just sort have... of quote uh, Groundhog Day? Oh, is that I like to say? Day? I like to say a little prayer, or I like to say a little prayer for world peace. Like that's what you sounded like. You <laughs> doesn't matter. No, no, you got to no. keep me on track. All right, I'm not going to do yeah. the joke now because it's been built up too much, and it's not good. It's not even funny. It won't be funny in a like that's so bad it's funny kind of way. I mean, it's up to you. Okay, there's a scene um, where these two bad guys are chasing Naven and Ray Walston, and they accidentally veer into a uh, a barn full of chickens, and they crash. Okay. And okay. the guy, the one guy, looks around and so, it looks sees all the chickens, and he he looks at the guy driving, and he says, and I quote, "Who taught you to drive, the Colonel?" Take care, everyone. What? Wait, what? That's what he says. Oh, I thought you wrote this joke. No, it's in the movie. <laughs> what does that mean? Who taught you to drive the Exactly. Kernel? I don't know what that means. Is that... Oh, is it a reference to... The fact that there's Colonel chicken in there. Sanders? Yes. I thought you were gearing us up for a joke you wrote. Oh, this has been... That's the way you prepared it. No, it isn't. Go back. All right. I want you to go back okay. at this point and play exactly what I said for the last five minutes. All right, get the no. court reporter on on the. <laughs> we have a a court reporter, uh, staffed at the show. You sure do. We'll have them write a stenographer. Back. So okay, well, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget <laughs> to go to networkspecialpodcast.com. dot com. You can find us there at. You can find us on all the social medias, except for one. Thanks to. Mr. Elon Musk deleted ah, all of our accounts. The worst. I deleted all of our accounts there. Good. Right? To Good sh- on you. To make a stand. But you're um, you're still on Truth Social I mean, though. The, 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 well, I was just going to say the real truth is I I just didn't want our podcast to be so close to the N word. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I took our so digitally down close there. to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Um, yeah, NetworkSpecialPodcast.com. And as we say at the end of every show, oh God, Amen. Is that what I forget what we said? <laughs> I can't go with God. I oh, can't oh, remember. In, in His name we pray. In His name we pray. <laughs> amen. Bye. Take care.